Hello friends, in this video I give you some important tips on how to clear technical interviews. Uh, so most of the students will be under the impression that technical interviews will be very tough, especially non-IT branch students. So electronic students, electrical students, mechanical students, they think that uh, it's very difficult to clear the technical rounds. And even CS students, they do one mistake when it comes to preparation of the resume. While preparing the resume in the section language is known, they normally put so many languages, they mention so many languages, C, C++, data structures, Java, C sharp, Python, uh, Ruby on Rails. So not necessarily you need to mention so many languages because uh, your resume is a question paper to you, it will come back to you. If you mention so many languages, you are telling the interviewer, boss, I am good at all these languages. Whichever you want, you take up that and you ask me questions on that. Uh, so that's why, so your resume preparation is also an art actually. In the coming videos, I will give you uh, important tips on how to prepare resume also very carefully. Because resume is a question paper, always keep in the mind. It will come back to you. So, uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, please subscribe so that uh, it will be a sort of motivation factor for me to upload more and more videos. Uh, in the coming videos, I will discuss so many technical questions and uh, because sometimes what will happen, uh, you will go to the interview hall keeping in the mind that okay, interviewer will ask some questions. But the interview may start like this, interviewer may ask you to select the topic of your choice. For example, uh, think of the scenario, he will ask you, okay, so which is your favorite subject? You may answer to that, okay, so C programming. And the interviewer may tell, okay, select the topic of your choice. So which one you are going to select? The selection is very important. So in the videos, I will tell how to select the topic so that interviewer will be satisfied. And because uh, on the interview day, you have to prove that uh, you are in a different basket. Uh, because, uh, for example, I take up one very simple question. Uh, think of the scenario, they ask the question, explain the difference between C and C++. So 99% of the students, they start like this. C is procedure oriented, C++ is object oriented. So this 99% of students will answer. So that is the reason your answer should be different. You should not be in 99% category, you should be in 1% category. So how you should answer to these type of questions. So that is where I will going to guide you on technical aspects. Thank you. In one of the interviews, they ask for a simple question. Variable A is used thousand times in the program and variable B is used two thousand times in the program and variable C is used three thousand times in the program. Declare the variables. So these variables will go into an integer type of data. The question looks very simple and almost 98% of the students they answer to this question like this int int a comma b comma c so almost 98 percent of the students got rejected in the first round the reason is very simple one student in the interview hall is slightly declared in a different way so what actually interviewer was expecting from the students here i before going to give the answer i uh, explain a small concept behind this so, if you dissect the computer system, you can see three major components. The first component is CPU, the second component is RAM, this RAM is also called primary memory and the third component is hard disk, hard disk is also called secondary memory, hard disk is also called secondary memory. When you save any program, the program will go and sit in the hard disk. So, for example, you take C drive. In the C drive, you save one program. In this, you have given the name for this program, 1.c. And here, the variable A is used in 1000 places, B is used in 2000 places, and C is used in 3000 places. Who has to execute this program and give the output? CPU. You go and ask CPU, my dear CPU, do you know that there is a hardware component called hard disk? It will say, I don't know. Moral of the story, CPU doesn't know that there is a hardware component called hard disk. So what should happen? The moment when you want to run the program, the program should come from hard disk to 
RAM. The moment when program comes to RAM, we don't call it as a program, we call it as a process. Now here, variable A is used in 1000 places, B is used in 2000 places, C is used in 3000 places. Now, CPU should go to RAM to access A 1000 times. CPU should go to RAM to access B 2000 times. CPU should go to RAM to access C 3000 times. So I give you a simple analogy. I am like CPU. Think of the staff room is like RAM. I have come to class without marker and duster. Now I want to write. Go to staff room, bring marker and write. I want to erase. Go to staff room, keep marker, take duster and come and erase. Again I want to write. Go to staff room, bring marker, keep the duster there. So I want to write. So if I keep on doing like this, one hour class I can do only half an hour. Half an hour walking and half an hour teaching. So what solution you can suggest to me? So God has given two hands to you. In one hand hold marker and another hand hold duster. How God has given hands to me, in the same way, God has given hands to CPU also. The hands of CPU are called registers. Like registers are embedded within the CPU. So, instead of storing ABC in RAM, if I store it in CPU register, the accessing will be fast. Because the CPU need not to go to RAM always. So, one student in the interview hall, he declared using the keyword register. Register int a comma b comma c. So most of the students they think that register keyword does not exist. So definitely there is a keyword called register in C language. Out of 32 keywords, register is also one of the keyword. But they didn't select this fellow also. The reason there was one more student in the interview hall. He slightly declared even in a better manner. That is, he declared like this. Register int int c comma b comma a. They selected this fellow. Why? What is the difference between a b c and c b a? Here you have to understand the fact that number of CPU registers are limited and they may be busy doing some other task. If registers are not available, uh, memory for these variables will be allocated in RAM. So, what will happen? Think of the scenario if only one register is available. In this declaration, A will go to register. But in this declaration, C will go to register. So, C, since C is used 3000 times, it is better if you put C in the register. So, what will happen for B and C here? Think of the scenario only one register is available. In this case, A will go to register, B and C will go to RAM. In this case, if only one register is available, C will go to register, B and A will go to RAM. There will not be any warning message that there is there are no registers like that. So, if two registers are available, C and B will go to register in this case, A will go to memory. If three registers are available, both the declarations are same. But in the worst case scenario, if only one register is available, this declaration is the best. So, that's why. Right. So, your answer may be correct, but you have to analyze is that is the best answer. Okay, and it should be to the level of the engineering students. So, in the coming videos, I will upload more, more and more questions of this such and what should be the best answer for a particular question. Thank you.